Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about final drive ratios and why you might want to change the final drive ratio in your car. Now if you don't yet have a good understanding of how car gearing works, you may want to check out my video Car Gears to get a better understanding of that before diving into this and talking about how final drive ratios work. Uh, but essentially what the final drive is, if you have your engine, uh, in this case we're looking at a rear wheel drive vehicle that passes to the transmission, you change your gears there, that sends that power to the rear differential. You have a gear ratio between this drive shaft going into the differential versus the axle shafts going to each wheel. And that gear ratio of that rear differential is your final drive ratio. So this is what we're talking about changing out. Now in this case, we're gonna be looking at uh, my Honda S2000 as an example and using the 4.1, which is the stock gear ratio of the final drive ratio. Now what I've written out here is the top speed in first through sixth gears uh, in miles per hour. And so first gear will top out at 45 miles per hour, assuming your 8,800 uh, RPM red line, and sixth gear going to 173 miles per hour. Now this is just based on gearing. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you have the power or not to get there. This is just looking at the gearing, what it allows you to get to. Um, so, you know, you probably might need a little bit of a power boost in order to actually reach 173 miles per hour. Okay. So if we were to change that final drive ratio to a higher number, for example, a 4.44, you can see that the top speed will drop in each of these scenarios. So first is down from 45 to 41. Your top speed overall is down from 173 down to 159. But what we've gained is an increase in wheel torque. So that's what we're sacrificing here uh, is the top speed in order to gain wheel torque. And so if you're to look at the wheel torque of the vehicle, Basically, it's going to follow the curve of the engine. So you can see it's flat. You're going to hit VTEC at some point, and then it's going to go up a little bit and remain flat. And this is a similar curve to what the S2000's engine's torque curve is going to look like. Now remember, by changing the final drive ratio, we're not changing the power or torque of the engine at all. We're just changing the gearing and therefore influencing the wheel torque. So if you change the gearing to a more aggressive gearing from a 4.1 to a 4.44, you're gonna boost that wheel torque curve in whichever gear you're in by 8.3%. That's the 4.44 divided by 4.1. What you sacrifice is that top speed. So with changing gearing, what you're always doing is you're sacrificing uh, either torque for top speed or you're sacrificing top speed for more torque. And so this, you know, this gear ratio here using this 4.44, you're gonna feel more Gs in whichever gear you're in as a result of the increased, uh, the more aggressive gearing, uh, you just have a lower top speed that you're able to hit. Same can go in the opposite direction. So you could sacrifice and go down to a 3.7, for example, and a 3.7, if you were to go up to a 4.1, that'd give you a boost of 10.8% in wheel torque, uh, but this 3.7 is gonna be able to hit much higher top speeds rather than the 4.1 uh, if you have a very powerful vehicle and you don't need uh, to compensate uh, for engine torque using gearing. So that's really what you're doing here is you're, you're increasing the wheel torque using gearing rather than the engine. So you could upgrade the engine and have more wheel torque, or you can upgrade uh, the gearing and have more wheel torque and sacrifice top speed. So, uh, you know, if you go through these different examples, uh, you can see, you know, you can get more aggressive and you can get even more up to 16.3 with a 4.77 if you were to swap out. But there are, of course, downsides to doing this. So here I've got uh, the RPM, what RPM will be at in sixth gear at 70 miles per hour or 113 kilometers per hour. Uh, the stock car will be at 3650 versus going to a 4.44, you'd be at 3950. If you were to go to a 4.77, 4250. So a huge increase over the stock uh, as far as what RPM you're gonna be at. So you're gonna be sitting at a much higher RPM while you're on the highway. And you of course have a significantly lower top speed, 148 versus 173, assuming you have the power to get there. So pros and cons of doing each thing. Now eventually there does come a point in which it's meaningless to keep getting more aggressive. Yeah, you can get more wheel torque and more wheel torque. Uh, but for example, what we look at here, if we look at the 4.77 in sixth gear, its top speed's 148. If we look at the 4.1 in fifth gear, the top speed is 144. So sixth gear it, with this 4.77, is very similar to just being in fifth gear with the 4.1. So essentially in this case, you've almost just eliminated a gear for no reason uh, because you can use your lower gears in the stock setup and get the same solution, uh, same wheel torque, 
rather than being in a higher gear here. And so there does come a point uh, at which you know, you're gonna cross over. This is gonna go below 144, and it's pretty much meaningless to do that because you've just eliminated your sixth gear and you're back down to your first through five here, and then you just have one really aggressive gear before all of that. So what are the advantages of switching to a higher final drive gear ratio? Well, as I've mentioned, you're gonna get greater wheel torque in each gear. So, you know, acceleration is one of the reasons uh, that cars are fun to drive. And so if you can increase uh, that G-force of planting you back in the seat, that's gonna make it more fun. And that's what you're doing by swapping out for a more aggressive gear ratio. That said, there are of course disadvantages to doing this. As I mentioned, you lower your top speed for each gear. You're gonna get reduced fuel economy because on the highway, you know, you're gonna be traveling at a higher RPM. RPM, so you're going to tend to have uh, more friction losses at higher RPM and get worse fuel economy. You're also going to have increased noise as a result of having the engine at a higher RPM, um, specifically for the highway, because honestly you can just shift gears at any time before that. Uh, you know, you can be in a, in a taller gear, uh, but when you're on the highway you're going to be in sixth gear, and so your, your peak uh, RPM is going to be higher, and so you're going to have a bit more noise. Now the other big thing is you're gonna have an incorrect speedometer reading. And so there are devices out there which you can use to correct, uh, to make sure that your speedometer actually reads uh, the correct uh, mile per hour so you don't get tickets, things like that, and then you actually know what speed you're going. Uh, but you will need to change uh, something in order to make sure your speedometer is correct. Uh, the same thing applies if you change your wheels and tire sizes uh, significantly from the stock setup you're going to mess with your speedometer, you're gonna mess with the gearing, and that's gonna mess with your speedometer and change uh, the speed that you're reading. And so you may have to buy a device in order to correct that. So thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.